Hi, Caitlin. This is Jackie from Caddy Jack's Knits, and this is our blog. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Jackie. And I'm coming to you from Madison, Wisconsin. Welcome. And today's little episode is about this sweater and cake wool. And I'm going to start you off with a poem. And this is one I wrote while making this sweater. So this sweater came out of being quarantined during Rhinebeck at the studio of Alyssa of Cake Wool in Socrates, New York. So I couldn't go to the festival, but I did sit in her studio with all of that yarn day after day. And it was really, I mean, for a knitter, can you imagine a better place to be stuck? So this is called Sweet Rocket, the actual yarn. And that's the name of the poem. So it goes like this, Sweet Rocket. She didn't know why she gave it that name, the pink silk mohair that was besties with the sun, a color that only knew smiles. She put it in my hands when my heart was sick and far from home, taking me in like a two by two rib on needles the size of toothpicks, getting gauge. This guardian angel with her found comfort and the bright turtleneck, a rocket to meet the winter coming, the cold and the debris of expectations in friendship blushing. So, um, this uh, sweater came out of that time. And, you know, I didn't really plan to knit this sweater. I just liked this color. This is where I began and I had four skeins of it and there was also some DK in the same color around. So I swatched and I swatched and I kept looking at the fabrics and looking at the number of stitches I was getting and it wasn't matching. Often I'll do it that way and then I'll find a pattern um, and it just wasn't working out. And when I did this particular swatch that I had, that I'm about to show you, I real I liked the fabric, but I also knew that I probably wouldn't have enough yardage to do a pieces of silver. Um, so I would need to add something else. So she also had this, this is her need base. This is her Surrey Alpaca, and this one's called Strawberry Rhubarb. She had this. So I took that and I put it into the swatch and it was just this much. It's funny how, I don't know, can you see? Um, and I thought that looked good. It reminded me of those Parker Thatch bags that I like so much. They're, uh, let me show you what one of them looks like. You know, the way they bring camo and pink and orange together. I love those colors. So this is kind of inspired by that. But it was so interesting because this is a two by two rib and it absolutely feels, of course, endless because you're on size two needles. But at the same time, I was in a, you know, I was, I had COVID and I was so disappointed. And this was what was on my needles. And it was such a bright therapy. It was just impossible to feel really, I mean, I just kept looking at it and it would, look back at me with its brightness and I, it was just a nice comfort during that time and then in terms of you know how I decided to stripe I'm sure there was um I believe there was or even how I came upon like how is this pattern in my head I mean I'd always seen it even when I first started knitting I liked it because I'm cold and I like a big turtleneck it was in Melina and it was in a speckled, nudey, uh, La Bien Aimé. It would have been the worst. The yarn that they had it in was lovely, but it was silver and, you know, uh, I would say moody. And that would have been absolutely the wrong feel for me at that time. So I needed, but I thought I can use silk mohair and make that sweater. And then I also saw um, Gina from Skin Cocaine. She did one of these um, try on all her sweaters type episode. And she said she just really loved this. And, and I do too. I love how um, 
I love the shoulder shaping. I love these wide rag wings. Let me just come in so you can see. Do you see that? Like the shapings on either side and then there's stockinette. So there's these nice bands here. And I just think that looks so smart. And then like anyone else, I just naturally look to Ravelry and I believe it was like Paula Strict had a black and white striped sweater where I like I liked where the stripes started. There was a band and it dropped down. Of course there's short rows too, um, which is nice. But there was a band so the stripes started lower. I really liked that. And then in terms of figuring out my own proportions, so this is silk mohair held double and surrey held double. I, I thought about, you can't go wrong with prime numbers. So I went with three and five. So this is three times two is six rows of surrey and five times two is eight rows of silk mohair. And that's how I did it. And then in terms of following the rest of the pattern, and this is something I kind of pretty much always do is I'm trying it on as I knit and I'm seeing that it's oversized. So the, the oversized, how oversized it is, will indicate how much of a drop you want at your armpit because if, you, if it's fitted, obviously it's going to go higher up in here. You all know this, but anyways. So these were my choices of like when to when to split for sleeves. I do not ever look at the pattern really. And well, I might consult it, but I look at me more than anything when I decide when to split and that kind of thing. And so I, and I only had some obvious spots, you know, here, here, here. So anyways, I split here. And then when I decided to do, when I did the sleeves, that's a little like this. Um, I just did my decreases every time I was in a green band, I decreased. And I'm sure, so I don't always say exactly what I've done, but you can see, I we all, well, we don't all, I don't know what we all do, but I like these little kind of decreases around a cuff, you know, so I'm sure I used, but I'm not sure that I put it in my Ravelry notes. You know, I was busy feeling not particularly well. Did I say it? No. Some proportion, 20%, maybe you decrease before you go to the rib, or maybe you severely go down in needle size. Um, so I know that I knit the body on a four, and then I went to ones. And at this point, I really can't tell you I didn't. I didn't write it down um, what I did for that cuff, but it's such little, it's such a little amount of knitting. All of us should be, be thinking about what we like and how we want our cuffs to look as we go anyways. Um, or not, did I say should? I don't mean should, but it's just helpful. Um, even deciding, you know, just to continue the pink and not go to, obviously I didn't want to go to green, but this is the joy of being a knitter, these little decisions that you get to make. And then it's one by one. And I think I went down to one for the cuffs and the hem. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure why. And a tubular bind off. And the hem is the same thing where, um, if you see that little gathering in there, I often, I often will do that and just you know, do some series of decreases before I start the hem, just so it has this like little blou blousey, easy look. Um, I love these bright colors in the winter. I think one of the things, you know, obviously it's good with denim and camo and, um, and, and really good with like white corduroys or white denim or something like that too, just to have that piece of bright. And by the way, these are, same um, cake wool had cake balooza and there was Susie from Pittsburgh Mercantile. She was there. So these are some of her beautiful earrings that are so bright and cheerful. Bright and cheerful is very helpful when we have winter, right? <laughs> so this is Piece of Silver um, by Vera Maki. And I know Alyssa will put up, if you're interested in this combo, uh, which I do love. 
Uh, I loved combining the silk mohair and the surrey and also just like the solid and then the speckled. But uh, she'll have kits available and I will link to her website below. So I I don't know. It's hard to see. Let's see if I can bring this in and show you. I just feel like some of you haven't um, are new here. So this was my first cake wool sweater and she worked very closely with me. This is the Sorrel and she made kits for this too. And uh, I couldn't love this more. And this was a spring sweater. Couldn't love this more. And then the other one she did with me, you saw if you've been watching, been watching, it's been a day um, or two. She overdyed a sweater for me, the Rowena jumper, and then she overdyed this one, which is the Nibla for me too, in this glorious color. I just think she's so talented with her colors. And I cannot find right now, I do have six skeins of this beautiful coral that I got at the beginning of the pandemic from her to hold triple and make a flom, and I can't find it anywhere. When I find it, I'll show it to you. Um, and there was one more yarn I decided to bring home. And this was a, these, these yarns were gifts from Alyssa. Um, and I, I just, I can't say enough about her generosity and her hospitality. <laughs> and the gifts are just gonna go on and on. So I, I'm so incredibly lucky. She is such a lovely human being and so talented. So I hesitate to show you these while I'm wearing this sweater, but this yarn, this is just not quite, but there I'll cover myself up, is a departure for me, but I think this is so smart. I think these colors are so fabulous and interesting. Uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't leave it behind. I have no idea what I'll do. I just assume that it will be something with texture or color work or something to take advantage of this incredible situation here. This is her pepper base, which is a BFL nylon fingering weight, and the color is Warhol. So I don't normally just show yarn, but that's just so inspiring. I love that. And the last thing I have to show you, I don't have any information about, but we did a shawl swap. And I know that Caitlin and I showed you on a previous episode, the shawls we made. Um, and this was the shawl I received in that shawl swap. And, and this was from Alyssa. And she crocheted this beautiful piece. And when I find out, I will tell you the pattern and the colorway is yet to be named. But isn't that wonderful? So this is a shawl, a crocheted shawl that is just glorious. And mm, so I am wrapped in love and gratitude and I just want to thank you so much for spending a little time with us again. And we look forward to seeing more of you. Okay.